Welcome to Vision Miner 3D Printing News. Today we've got a new 3D printed space suit along with some very cool applications in the automotive industry as well as some new shoes from Adidas and of course a major acquisition in the materials industry. Stick with us and we'll get right into it here on Vision Miner 3D Printing News. Okay, so getting right into it, we've got researchers from the University of North Dakota have been awarded a $750,000 grant from NASA to develop a 3D printed spacesuit, which they're nicknaming the NDX-3. So working alongside the Marshall, Johnson, and Kennedy Space Centers, the NDX-3 is going to be fabricated using a combination of flexible polymers. So far, all pressure and spacesuits have been built by using traditional sewing techniques, explains Leon, the professor over at the University of North Dakota. They take literally thousands of hours and very skilled sewing artisans to build one spacesuit, and they're also very fragile. So by 3D printing the suits, obviously they can save some time and money and make it a little bit more efficient. He goes on to say, as we venture beyond low Earth orbit, astronauts will need a reliable method to repair and adjust their suits. What's more, they currently cost over $2 million each to make, and usually they can't be reused because they're often made specifically for the astronaut. UND began collaborating with NASA a few years ago, uh, specifically to change the way spacesuits are made, with the aim of designing an enhanced and more cost-effective alternative design. This comes a lot more into play with the long distance space travel, you know, going to Mars or going wherever. Specifically, on Mars and beyond, astronauts won't have the luxury of an army of seamstresses on their planetary habitat to take care of their suits, uh, and asking for parts from mission control would take more than a year to deliver. Another cool detail is the potential aerospace applications of chainmail-like 3D printed materials. Essentially, the additively manufactured fabrics could be used as spacecraft shielding or scaled down to provide protection for astronauts in the form of spacesuits. Moving right along, we've got an event for you this week, actually. Tomorrow, on October the 22nd, 2020, there is a online expo. It's called the Additive Digital World, a free virtual event hosted by 3D Natives. And it's going to be a whole day full of expert panel discussions, uh, networking, and there's even an after party. So it should be pretty cool. It starts around 5 a.m. Pacific time or 8 a.m. Eastern time. That means I'll be drinking a lot of coffee if I manage to sleep the night before. But it's really great, you know, uh, one of the best things about the additive community is the events themselves. You've got Rapid TCT, Form Next, AMUG, all these different things where users and people in the industry come together and you get to experience and see the technology firsthand. Not only are they great for business relationships, but friendships as well. I can't tell you how many guys out there, you know who you are, who we chum and talk all the time just from meeting at the expos. Check the link in the description for the schedule and all the different speakers and all the information you might want. Register now. And while you're at it, uh, feel free to give this video a like if you're enjoying it. It helps us out a lot on the YouTube algorithm, helps us reach more people and get this cool, awesome stuff out to the masses. Moving right along, we've got more from 3D Native, specifically uh, a broad review of the most innovative 3D printing applications in automotive. So we're going to go straight down the list here. We got some really cool stuff that you've probably seen and some stuff you might not have. Audi is using polyjet machines to prototype production parts like wheel covers, grills, door handles, and even light enclosures. BMW even opened their own additive manufacturing center with the aim of improving production and prototyping. There are actually 3D printed parts in the i8 Roadster. Bugatti obviously has 3D printed it, its brake calipers. Uh, years ago, they turned to additive manufacturing titanium to make their calipers lighter, and they ended up with a 40% reduction in weight in the front of the caliper. They claim it's also the largest caliper for a sports car, with eight titanium pistons on each caliper in the front and six in the back. Ferrari has used titanium printing to design the pistons on one of its engines, creating a much more complex, more resistant, and lighter part, thanks in particular to topological optimization. Ford made an aluminum air intake manifold and partners with several different companies to create everything from lug nuts to production tooling and, and really cool stuff. General Motors is actually 3D printing their seat supports. Lamborghini uses additive to personalize their Scion Roadster. McLaren and its 720S model have an aftermarket option which uses 3D printed body parts specifically for the aerodynamics. Mercedes 3D prints metal parts for its trucks, making them more resistant to heat and chemicals, while also making it easier for them to produce small batches of parts. There's even a 3D printed tire from Michelin. Uh, you know, the design is really cool, but what else is different? 
it's absolutely puncture proof. There's no air in it, so it'll never get a flat. Uh, well, I mean, never say never, right? Uh, but that's freaking cool. Check that out. Mini makes custom car components to personalize per customer various body parts and interior parts. To date, per year, they're already doing 30,000 prototype parts and over 140,000 3D printed components. Porsche obviously made the first ever 3D printed engine pistons in the 911 GT2. Uh, I think we had that in our first episode. Go back and check that out if you haven't already. And you know, the list goes on, you know, from big manufacturers to Volkswagen and their new electric version of their vintage van. Uh, here at Vision Manor, one of my favorite customers actually is uh, Data Driven Performance, and they 3D print custom intake manifolds for sports cars like the CTS V. Uh, go check them out on Facebook and Instagram, Data Driven Performance. Really, really cool stuff. It looks great, and you can emboss your logo in there, and it's freaking sweet. There's a lot of people who say 3D printing isn't used in real industry yet. Well, I mean, clearly it is. Uh, and if you haven't already, head down to that subscribe button if you want to hear more stuff like this. We're coming out every week with new news and it's a good time. Moving right along, we've got the Future Craft strung from Adidas or Adidas or however the heck you pronounce that thing. Uh, it basically combines additive manufacturing and textile manufacturing. They're using a one-of-a-kind manufacturing process that allows the athlete's data to be used. And then they position each fiber in the shoe with maximum precision. The Strung is going to be launched in the first part of 2022, and it's going to target the runner profile. So the upper part of the shoe actually wraps the foot like a lightweight seamless shell and it's made with minimal material waste. Designed with maximum precision to ensure a targeted fit and the right support, it always keeps the foot in the correct position thanks to the strategic positioning of the most robust red threads in the heel area, the central part, and the toe. Uh, in other shoe news, Puma has already been involved with 3D printing for a while now, and they have a collection of mechanical foam cushioning shoes. So developed using MIT's design lab, Zetic Technology, X-E-T-I-C, it provides constant cushioning by pairing mechanical design with foam. Uh, while the final product that they made wasn't actually 3D printed, its formation was based on years of research uh, based on 3D printing concepts. 3D printing has been disrupting the footwear industry for a while. Some of you have probably seen the scan your foot thing at Nordstrom. Basically, 3D printing already has or can improve it. On top of all that, there's actually research and development tax credits available for eligible US-based 3D printing shoe design activities. So if you happen to be in that field, check that out. And this week, I've actually got a couple props to show you. Hopefully, we can, we can punch in on this. But I've got a SLS printed midsole that you can put in your shoe. And you can actually go to Forecast 3D and get these made. Uh, and they were giving these out as samples at the show recently. Um, and yeah, really cool. And it's really strong, super flexible, you know. That's one cool example. Um, clearly we have, oh no, I don't want that. Um, <laughs> we've got this thing, it's been in the shop for years. Uh, and it's a TPU shoe. It's like, it just printed FDM and it's, it's like a complete shoe. Um, I wouldn't really want to wear it, but uh, I mean, it's all possible. So you too can make shoes in your home. All right, moving right along, we've got a big acquisition in the materials field. So, Cafestro just acquired DSM's resins and functional materials business, which includes its additive manufacturing sector for $1.61 billion. No, no, billion euros. That's about $1.9 billion. So DSM is well known for making materials, but they've just started releasing some specific FFF or FDM materials in filament form. Uh, let's go over those real quick. We've got r -Nite, which is a pure PET for applications that need to withstand high temperature, rough weather, or other harsh conditions. So a lot of water bottles and things are made out of PET and different bottles that hold oils and things of that nature. Uh, they've also got r which is a lighter, smarter, greener alternative uh, for flexibility. Um, we've also got the Novamid nylons uh, for durability and good mechanical properties. They've got a few different grades of the Novamid and one of them has carbon fiber but the applications are very wide. We've got automotive connectors, electronic enclosures, lighting enclosures, benchtop assembly jigs for electronics, end-use automotive or under the hood, and motorsports parts. 
aerospace and railway applications, air intake parts, door handles, engine covers, radiator grills, electronic tools and parts, circuit breakers, connectors, tubes for wiring, cable protectors, etc. And we've even got a sports category with ski binders. That would be pretty cool. So a DSM statement on the takeover by Covestro states that this transaction represents a logical step in the strategy of the business. We believe it is positive news for the future of the additive manufacturing business and that Covestro is the right company to develop the business going forward. Very cool. Moving right along into the news blitz this week. There's so much going on every week, seriously. But let me give you a list down of the other stuff we thought was cool. We've got three your mind with three key metrics to optimize your additive manufacturing profitability. So if you run a print service, the team over at three your mind can probably help. Uh, frankly, they're really cool guys over there. So check them out. Next, we've got Renishaw is 3D printing ocean turbines with Biome Renewables and Nova Scotia Community College. We've got 3D printing chocolate with Cocoa Press, more edible additive manufacturing, and we've got light work of heavy industry, topology optimization and 3D printing used to tackle part obsolescence. We've also got Zortrax and the European Space Agency enabling composite 3D printed parts using two blends of Peak. We specialize in Peak, so I'm very interested in this one. Zometry reveals a partnership with BMW to produce custom assembly fixtures with 3D printing. One droplet continuous 3D printing makes objects from single drops of resin. Now this is huge because resin can be very expensive. The large scale SLA printers, it can literally be hundreds of thousands of dollars in material just to change your material. And who knows how much of that will still be good even if you pack it back up. And next we've got a critical analysis of the desktop metal SPAC deal regarding that acquisition last month. Definitely get ready for Form Next Connect 2020, their virtual online event. And of course, don't forget the additive digital world tomorrow or October 22nd, 2020. Should be really cool and it's free, so why not? Go learn some stuff, talk to people, and we'll be there. So you can literally ask me questions. Uh, we'll be there at some different times. I got another video on the channel about that. So check that out if you want to know when and where. Should have an email too, so if you're not on our newsletter list, what are you doing? Moving right along to this week's winner, we've got Kale Levare Monenen, who says, I also made a fully 3D printed guitar, but, but forgot to design it indestructible. <laughs> so last week we did a feature on the Sandvik indestructible guitar. Really cool. Go check it out. All right, so this week we actually want to feature some of you from the community in there. So if you have a 3D printer and you're printing cool stuff, send in some pictures to vis contact at visionminer.com and put 3D printing news community print in the subject line and you'll be entered for a chance to be featured in next week's thing. So if you run a business or something like that and you've made some cool parts, dude, send in your stuff and we'll feature you and talk about the application. Should be really cool. Definitely send that in. Anyway, if you're into that, check it out. Otherwise, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Have a positive rest of your day, and I'll see you on the next one.